Hey guys, welcome to a brand spankingly new deep playthrough, uh, this time of Watch Dogs Legion. I also recently started Assassin's Creed Unity, uh, actually a six year old game. I'm really late to the party, but I do think it was always on my agenda. Um, as being one of the most underrated games ever, uh, I initially wanted to do Watch Dogs and also Cyberpunk, but when these games recently uh, released, I just had so much uh, technical issues with them. So uh, that's why I started in the meantime Assassin's Creed Unity. Uh, that was also like two months since my uh, previous uh, upload. And that is because uh, given the new, uh, yeah, let's call it next gen title, Cyberpunk, Watch Dogs Legion, uh, I actually decided to uh, upgrade the PC and I was like, okay, well, I only upgrade the, the, the GPU or will I just um, yeah, take everything uh, with it, like a totally new PC build and I went with the letter and stupid me, I was, uh, I immediately sold my 9900K to ATTI uh, system while being not f sufficiently aware of the total unavailability of the new graphics cards. So that really took like some uh, six to weeks to eight months, uh, two months, eight weeks, uh, waiting uh, for the new card to be available, being stuck in like a pre-order list that hardly moved. And uh, yeah, so that is why there was, uh, I wanted to actually do these games earlier, but because of the uh, system build and also the technical issues of these games uh, during launch, uh, yeah, it, it, it's a little bit later. Um, yeah, but now I just, I wanted to continue with Assassin's Creed Unity, but actually I, I, I thought like, okay, let's uh, check whether the patches in Watch Dogs Legion helped out a bit. And actually it seems to run pretty fine now. So I decided to also simultaneously boot up Watch Dogs Legion. Uh, it will be on my new build. So that is uh, MSI Unify set for 90 motherboards, a 10, 900K, Intel CPU running 5.2 gigahertz all cores. Um, team group 2 times 16, 32 gigabyte DDR4 running at 4300 megahertz gas latency 16. And initially I wanted to go with uh, our 380 graphics cards, but they were simply not available. And then at one time a 390 popped up and I somehow um, yeah, motivated to myself that it was actually the, be the best buy. But of course it isn't, it's a tremendous amount of money and I really have to um, yeah, c cut back on my uh, spending the couple of uh, the, the foreseeable time because it really was an expensive card, but uh, at least it was available. Uh, so I got a, a Rock Strix 390 running with plus 40 megahertz core and plus 1000 megahertz memory. Uh, I am a little bit afraid that it's indeed not a good buy if uh, the 380 Ti being rumored uh, that they will come as well. If that card indeed releases and it has like 20 gigabytes of VRAM, then it will be, and it will be maybe sold for, I don't know, thousands dollars or euros. Then what I bought now was really a bad deal because I paid some, uh, yeah, up to $2,000 for it. It does have 24 gigabytes of uh, RAM. And that was also one of the reasons I didn't mind buying that premium uh, over the 380 because the 380 in my book really had too little VRAM. It only has like 10 gigabytes. So at least I was okay. I'm future proof at least for a year or two. Don't have to think about it. I have enough RAM. So that was the reason. But if now like an in-between card comes out, like a 380 Ti, which does have the VRAM, but not the ridiculous price card the 390 has, yeah, then of course, uh, I'm, uh, yeah, a bit <laughs> I did a bad deal, but let's uh, worry about it later. Of course, I can now just sell the 390 and again, start waiting for a 380 Ti, but I've been without a card for too long, for two months almost. So um, 
yeah, I will just keep it. And once a 380 Ti releases, I may reconsider and possibly sell the 390. Sorry, a lot of uh, technical babbling. I do like to talk that out of my system. I don't have that many people in my surroundings or real life environment that are like uh, interested in stuff like this. So I just uh, spew it out on the internet. Uh, internet. Um, we will be doing a deep playthrough, uh, my niche, so that's like a thorough approach of the game, doing the primary campaign, but also side missions, collectibles, checking up, reading up on the lore, like in-game uh, texts and uh, emails and uh, books, whatever you have in this game. Uh, it will also always be max graphics, uh, max difficulty, I'm not, yeah, there is a difficulty slider in this game. Actually, there's perma death, which is a pretty cool uh, function, so I will be enabling that. Um, so, uh, broad approach, max graphics, max difficulty, zero HUD. I totally dislike the tendency in modern games with uh, over cluttered HUDs and making it all super foolproof. Uh, appealing to the lowest common denominator of all the game uh, gamers, like people who really need hand-holding and no, no offense to those people, but I really am more of like the old school gaming. I like a challenge and I also like the feeling of an accomplishment after I have figured out something for myself, instead of having like a big arrow on the screen pointing where I have to go. Then getting there and getting a new arrow, but saying what I have to do next. It is just totally unimmersive and really kudos to Ubisoft that they really allow quite good customizability of the huts. I don't even normally, uh, usually I also have to add some mods to disable all the hut elements. But I think in this game you can pretty much... Um, just uh, disable all the hot elements, so that's really good. So it will be a deep playthrough, broad approach, max graphics, max difficulty, minimal huts, and that is about it. Um, yeah, everything yeah, I can quickly show you gameplay. Um, yeah, mostly all default. This that emote wheel that can yeah just go for me. I'm really focused on the offline singer player campaign, not so much on the online aspects. Mouse and keyboard not relevant, playing with the controller, game pads. The control scheme, it's pretty basic. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm playing on the Xbox 360 controller. Vibration on, aim snap off, a magnetism. Yeah, do I adjust how strongly the camera movement slows down while aiming at targets? All right, I will just keep it uh, for on default for now, and the rest as well. Hot reticle is the only one I needed to keep on because otherwise you really cannot aim your weapon over the shoulder third person view. But I made it black, so it's much less uh, visible than uh, being white. Um, Furthermore, yeah, everything is off except the blood effects, but that's not really a hot element, I think. Full hack, also, I kept it on because I'm not really sure otherwise what hack options there are. Maybe if I'm getting more proficient in the game, I can put that off as well, those controls. Uh, hints. Maybe. Yeah, for now we'll just keep them off, I think. I can read up on hints and tutorial, I think, in the, in the game menu as well. Uh, but is there a tutorial of some sort? Maybe I would like to keep that on in the start of the game. I don't really see it. I think I'm mixing it up with playtesting of Cyberpunk, which... By the way, Cyberpunk, I will be doing as well a playthrough, but I will wait it out a bit until first there will be a Disable HUD mod released because there are still way too many um, HUD elements in that game and also waiting for some more patches because the game is quite buggy still at release, also on the PC. It's not only the consoles. Here, everything is maxed out. HDR, HDR is on. Uh, everything ultra. The only thing I had to swallow my pride, but I had to enable DLSS because even with a 10900K at 5.2 gigahertz and a 390 RTX Rockstrix 
overclocked. The game uh, without DLSS fully maxed out, it simply runs super stuttery, like dipping down into the 25 FPS, low 20s even, or, or 30s, 20s. It is uh, unplayable. So that is about the graphic options. And over here, it's like 4K refresh rate auto, V-Sync off, no limit, and everything for the rest defaults. Audio, everything defaults. Subtitles off, also unimmersive. I hope we can all understand English. Um, that is about it. And then you also still have menu narration, accessibility options, aim lock, it's all off. Simplified puzzles, off camera effects, shaky cam, screen distortion, that's all on. Everything for the rest off. Speech to text, that's more like for online. So that's about it. Here we go. A new campaign. This my, I already uh, yeah booted up in the game. That's why there's a continual option for playtesting. But now we will be doing a new game. Here we go. Oh, no, by the way, let's override this one. Yes. Single player difficulty, hard. And we will be doing permadeath mode. And you also have Iron Man. And I keep forgetting what it does, Iron Man. Permadeath is that your NPC can actually die. Ah, and Iron Man is that you, I think you cannot change this difficulty in game anymore so it's really you start with it and you'll have to uh, endure with it so i do like that challenge uh, here we go see you on the other side What a shit. town. History around every corner and a tourist photographing it. Pub serving up a pint and a smile. All that music, theater and art and multiculturalism. And the world oldest underground, the tube. The class of cities really, top shelf stuff. Only took 12,000 years to build it up and one night to tear it all down. I actually forgot to um, put off the GPU monitor in the top left uh, of the screen. I will put that off in the next episode. What's our status? Perimeter security's down, but plenty of your flying friends about. Dalton, no time to waste. Yes, ma'am. I'm in. Any idea what we're up against, Bagley? If you haven't rushed off, I might. Ever consider leaving these security threats to the authorities? That's rich, Bagley. The government would sooner arrest us for trying to help than actually do something useful. We'll have to sort this one on our own. Carefully, Dalton. Bagley, are you detecting a little worry in Sabine's voice? Brilliant. Asking the computer about feelings. This explains so much. Shut it, you two, and get to work. There she is. All right. Um, I'm now wondering, should I quickly get to the desktop and Disable the monitor. Now I will do it in the next episode. All right, here we are. This is the tutorial section. Perimeter security is back up. South entrance is secure. Which actually runs way better than the open roads. <coughs> right. That hurt you more than it hurt me. One down. 
Do us a favor and keep it quiet, Dalton. If they don't shoot me, I won't shoot them. I How's that? I already know this prologue section. Actually, already recorded the first episodes. Then somehow, I'm not really sure what the reason was, but decided to discard it. Probably because of the bad performance. Here, the performance is pretty good, but of course, DLSS is enabled. So, in my book, that's a little bit cheating. Pretty cool, those masks really like. Uh, thematic for this whole game in all the pre-release footage and marketing materials you saw that pig mask <laughs> oh. I must say the melee combat it feels pretty visceral it's pretty well done They've got loads of dead set gear down here. And why do you suppose that is? What? How did they get their hands on it? I don't know. But someone wants to make it look like dead set was here. Shit. You need to proceed with extreme caution, Dalton. Who are these men in black anyway? Nothing identifying. I suspect that's by design. Right, here we go. <coughs> this doesn't do good. The entire place is rigged to blow. Jesus, those canisters. Badly is that? RDX nitrogen, enough to level Parliament. Can you locate a detonator, Bagley? Not exactly, but there's a device streaming a fuckload of encrypted data from the floor above you. Yeah, that fits the bill. On my way. Right. I always forget. Where... Okay, there are two guys left. Come on, dudes. Here he comes. Oh shit, he's too far for me to do an edge kill. Ah. <coughs> she is not. It was actually a she. You know what? I'm going to take a chance. <coughs> like so. They've staged dead set propaganda all around the bombs. These pricks are going to blow up Parliament and hang it on us. Not if you get to that detonator first. Check out the temp on my GPU. It's supposed to have a great cooler, the Rock Strix. 85 degrees, it's pretty hot. Um, probably I will enable V-Sync in the episodes, in the next episodes. Forgot about that as well. So I have to make a final couple of adjustments. Remove the GPU monitor. And enable adaptive V-Sync. 60 FPS is good enough for me. And by the way, in the world itself, it never, in the open world, it never hits 80 or 70 like it's doing now. Weird that this cutscene is like 70 FPS, while the initial cutscenes were like 30. Right in the House of Commons. Whoever these men in black are, they've got brass bollocks to set up in the center of government. Blast bollocks. Right. Ah, now it's 30 I found the detonator. Again. Probably that before it was and like... definitely live. In game. Bagley, I'm gonna need some help Cutting. with this. Yes, you are, but sadly, I'm locked out. Fuck. We don't have a chance without Bagley. Wait, Wait. I might know a workaround. We trained your manual overrides at MI5. You're full of surprises. Be quick about it. All right, Bagley, do your thing. I'm in. And the bombs have just armed themselves. Well, that may complicate matters. For fuck's sake. Can you defuse them or not? Of course I can, but I might also trip another failsafe and vaporize you, so fair warning. I expect this to draw some attention your way, Dalton. Oh, I'm counting on it. Company at our back door. Shit. Dalton, we've got some heat here at HQ. 
How long is this going to take, Bagley? Depends how often you interrupt me with questions. All right, everyone. Faces on, guns out. It's about to get real. I'll try and hold them off. I'm sure they're still in the area. Oh, uh, Shut up, I didn't take the sugar. Badly, update. Let's just say I'm both impressed oh and annoyed God. by how sophisticated this anti tamper security is. Still working. Oh, Badly, tell me you're close. I'm through security, now wading through terabytes of decoy code looking for the detonation sequence. Ross, stand down! Oh, you should. I need your physical appendages now. <laughs> Holy shit, there's like major aim assist here. I totally missed that guy, but somehow I had shot at him anyways. What's wrong? There are three slots on the left. One of them is the receiver. You need to pull the controller wire. Are you fucking kidding me? No, I'm fucking not. Pull the wire. If this gets me blown up, Bombs defused. <laughs> See, that wasn't so bad, was it? Bagley, you bastard. You're gonna give me a bloody heart attack then. <laughs> whoa, 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 what the fuck am I looking at? It appears Parliament is not the only target. More bombs are going live as we speak. On screen, Bagley. Fucking hell, we need to get the word out. Those sites need to be evacuated. They're spread out all over London. There isn't any time. But my sister's at the town conference. We have to do something. I picked up a transmitter on the roof that is sending out a signal to the other bomb sites. If you can reach it... I can shut it all down. Sabine! Fuck! Dalton, we're breached! Go! The roof! All right, all right. Jesus. All right, let's get some weapons and ammunition. Auto pickup, super handy. And did I already? Oh, these are emotes. Nope. This is what I need. Picked up a new weapon. Sabine, what's going on? We're being raided. It's a bloodbath. Her protocol is to wipe everything, including Bagley. Right away. I need him for the transmitter. I know, but if they get him, they get everything. Names, ops, locations. Graphics are Okay, I'll do amazing. it the old-fashioned way. Wipe him. Yes, wipe me. Do it, Sabine, and get the hell out of there. Fuck. Okay. Bagley's down. You're on your own. Dalton, if this goes... It won't. I'll see you at the rally point. I promise. <laughs> Good luck. Thanks. Um, like so. Open the door. Uh, 
Gadget, and it didn't do anything. How many do I still have? Ah, it's on cooldown. You cannot throw them that quickly. But anyways, uh, I have to say, the ray tracing and stuff, it all looks amazing. So I'm really happy with that. Some important work. Important work? Killing thousands of. Exactly. To save the world. You do know Londoners have died before. Hmm? The plague, the Great Fire, the Blitz. It's not much fun. But destruction is always the cure. And it begins today. Zero day. Oh my god. Holy shit. <coughs> I do from playtesting. The explosions though. devastated three sites in London. Authorities are asking residents to remain in their homes as the situation continues to develop. We have received no official casualty total, but it is expected for a series of candlelight vigils that brought closure to thousands of families and indeed to an entire city. London is now laser focused. They attend Dowling Street where Nigel Cass, CEO of private military company Albion, received a mandate to secure London. Cass has vowed to hunt down dead set. Terrorist group responses failed. Albion used cutting edge artificial intelligence systems and autonomous drones to capture the remaining members of dead set. Stark warning to would be insurgents. Corporations are posting record profits due to increased efficiencies in production and distribution, enabled by the use of technologies initially developed and approved for security purposes. It's a long overdue cleanup as crime numbers take a dive. Illegal gambling, drug trafficking, and prostitution all down following prosecutions of the leaders of four of London's five largest criminal syndicates. The streets of Camden and Brixton. Mandate is extended indefinitely by the government, life finally begins to return to normal. Curfews and travel restrictions have been lifted in all boroughs thanks to the deployment. Big news outlets, reports of rioting in Trafalgar Square have been greatly exaggerated, possibly by foreign meddlers pushing a false narrative through social media. Albion is in complete control of a few. Reprimand public 
about the circulation of fake news, conspiracy theories persisting in dark corners of the internet, that terrorist group DedSec were framed for the bombings, have been roundly rejected. Our own reporters could not find a single Londoner willing to expound those theories on camera. The facts Right. I need to assemble a team, but I can't reboot DedSec alone. Let me break into London CTOS and see who's available. and we've been discussing the hacktivist, now alleged terrorist group, DedSec, on this week's Buccaneer Radio. Right. And we have Colin help? calling I in. Colin, what's your take? Now, I've been saying from the start we should have read up DedSec and thrown him in jail. Now, I'll say they should all be lined up and shut. You don't find it awfully convenient that they've been fingered as the attackers, but we've seen no proof. Look at Toe! Look at our city! What more proof do you need? Well, Colin, I'd say you have to look at their history of non-violent action. Albion's put more civilians in the hospital in the past few months than DedSec ever has. I smell a scapegoat. Now I have Emily calling in. Emily, what's your take? You're absolutely right, Claire. The government's just framing DedSec because they want to make it seem like they have this under control. They probably have no clue who was behind the bombings. But that doesn't look good on the news, does it? DedSec's been a thorn in their side. Who better to pin it on? Angie, I have you next. What do you make of all this? I think if anything, Dead Sex shows their true colours. It's terrifying to think we harboured such a dangerous element for years. Terrorists in our own backyard. Do you find Dead Sex more frightening than the different gangs in London like Clan Kelly? Clan Kelly might set your shop on fire and maybe they'd kill you, but even they wouldn't try to blow up all of Parliament. Next, I have Crypto King. Do you feel safer using a pseudonym? Everyone should. Why make it easier for them to track you? And now we've seen what they're capable of and how far they're willing to go. Hold on. Do you mean the government? Are you suggesting the government was responsible for the bombings? Oh, trust me, Claire. They didn't do it alone. They're all in on it. The government, Albion, Sirs, Bloom, Sky Bloody Larson, and all the way up to Downing Street. They want to keep us scared, harness us with, with mind control, suck every last ounce of usefulness out of us, and, and even in death they'll sell off our bodies. And what do you suggest we do, Crypto King? Go underground. Deep enough, no electric signal can get you. It's the only way. Well, thank you to all of our callers today, and thank you for tuning in and scouting for the truth along with me. Next week, Buccaneer Radio will be diving into the Albion Corporation. Just who are these men and women being paid lucrative amounts for the city's defence? Are they protecting us? Protecting London? Or someone else's interests? See you next week, fellow pirates. Claire Waters, out. Right, Claire Waters is a little bit annoying in my book with the total disdain she had for the Crypto King dudes. I mean, I can understand him in this um, fictional world using... Um, a username instead of his real name so she's really retarded and also what i wanted to say is that the reason why i was not really that much looking forward to this game is the fact that also in this intro video it was about fake news and foreign meddling and um, conspiracy theories all really close to real life politics in 2020 with the whole Trump and leftist media, everybody uh, accusing each other of fake news. Uh, the, the, it, it's just, for my book, this game is much too close to real life politics than I would like to. Because for me, gaming is like escapism. I really can do without it. I, I see enough of that crap on the, the internet every day in real life. So I really don't like, need it in my game. So that's, but still, I'm willing to give the game a chance and from playtesting the city is amazing 
although also, and that's also a little bit reminiscent to real life, it is more or less like, it's in my view, uh, I've been not to London in quite a while, but it's more like, it's not really representative of real life London because it's mostly like a hipster paradise. And it's uh, also that guy at the start, the, the, the wolf, Delta Wolf or something, that James Bond-like prologue character getting sh shot off, um, getting killed. That was like pretty uh, likely to happen because of course he is a middle-aged uh, straight white male and he needs to get out of there. Um, so in this game, in, in my book, it's much too much politically laden with the whole uh, left versus right thing, the, the white male um, toxicity thing super annoying sorry i have to talk this out of my system i will give the game a chance but i hope it's a bit more balanced than totally um pushing like a certain direction like what also happens in real life uh, media but all right i had to get that off my chest here we go That, that whole also straight white male Shit. thing. Situation is worse than I thought. Just a little bit uh, too black and white. But there's uh, a candidate. No pun intended. Looks like your dead sex best hope. There are a lot of very reasonable, kind and nice uh, straight white males. So having like a total hatred for them is a bit annoying in my book. Um, I will, because I do want to... Um, Disable the GPU monitor and enable VSync. Uh, I will not look into each and every one of these uh, dudes. I will uh, and gr do that. I will look into the uh, NPCs better going forward in the game. But for now, let's just pick one. Um, we have an electrical engineer. I am a straight white male myself, so excuse me, but I would like to play as one. Uh, so I am going to narrow down my selection. Uh, by the way, what I did notice is that these bios of these uh, NPCs, it's totally random. This guy, for instance, he makes, okay, he makes, he's a doctor and he makes 98,000 pounds. <coughs> but I saw like other occupations uh, which made like hardly any or like very low tier. For instance, this one. Uh, okay, she's a socialite making 170k. But I, I saw like certain professions which totally did not match the amount they got paid for it. For instance, she's a ghostwriter making 86k. And yeah, now it's maybe it was patched and it was. Yeah, for instance, this guy, he's a banker and he only makes like 22k. So, uh, yeah, it's a bit random, it seems. But it's not that bad. It does look better than the... Uh, when I was here like a week or two weeks ago, it was totally random. The amount of money linked to certain professions. Uh, anyways, this guy is a software engineer and this is also what I meant with the hipster bunker paradise. I don't think that London only is inhabited by these kinds of people. These are, there are hardly any regular folks here and, and no offense to these persons. They are pretty cool as well, but they're all like super hip, super edgy, super punkster. And yeah, maybe I'm just getting a little bit too old for uh, that. Uh, anyways, this guy is pretty regular guy, but he actually is a counterfeiter. Um, he was sentenced for aggravated assault, owns a pet lizard, climbed Kilimanjaro in a summer. It's all very edgy. 
electrical engineer. Former sex worker. Posted six video being thrown out of Buckingham Palace. Post six seconds video. All right, the sex worker. No, I don't want to play as a sex worker. Uh, and what was this guy? Software engineer. Owns metal detector. Is a vegetarian. Computer parts. Born in Scotland. Questioned by search for content of a text message. All right, this is a pretty regular dude. Here we go. Hello. to see you're alive. If you're still committed to the cause, DedSec needs you. I'll send you the coordinates to our last safe house. Meet me there. Fine. All right, that will be the objective for the next episode. Welcome to London, guys. I will be ending the episode here. I will try to keep them around 45 minutes. Otherwise, the file size becomes too big and YouTube takes forever to process them to 4K. <coughs> um, I hope you enjoyed. Sorry for my rant on the politics in this game, but yeah, it's just something that I, yeah, I, I just really don't like that much, but it is what it is. Uh, for the rest, the city itself looks amazing. It's a shame that if you disable DLSS, that the frame rate immediately tanks to like half of what it is now. Uh, but with DLSS, it still looks pretty good in my book, so I am happy. Um, I hope to see you in the next episodes. For the meantime, do not forget, you yourself always do keep on gaming. See you later.